Soul Cancer If the playground was a pool of sharks, Ray was a paralyzed seal. As he sifted through his locker, he felt like a lone tree at a chainsaw convention. His mind was in a place where gourmet meals tasted like asbestos cookies in plutonium syrup. First period inched closer, like the tide edging towards a child buried to the chin. The class sniggered as Mr. Snedden quizzed Ray on quadratic trinomials. He stared at the blackboard in mute panic. In history he lay slumped over his desk, trapped in a more private hell. That evening Ray entered the car like an innocent death row prisoner on his way to the electric chair. As the old Ford passed the school gates, he was still as nervous as conjoined twins ordered to cartwheel across a high wire. Normally the busloads of girls would have been more exciting than a luxury cruise to Mars. A buxom cutie mistook Ray's tortured frown for contempt. From all attention he was soon exempt. Battle of the Genders basketball began. Ray felt no more enlivened by the spectacle than if he'd been watching a crucifixion. At the barbecue he looked on as dispassionately as a fish, as Zack Zorro Zimmerman strutted his way up the diving tower, amidst risque repartee from flame-haired floozies. Three hundred students cheered en masse as Zack ended his triple twist with a mighty splash, drenching Miss Page, living proof of the Jurassic Age. As she clenched the remnants of her teeth, she raged, "'That'll cost you ten pages on manners, Zimmerman!' That night, if he'd been a boat, Ray couldn't have crossed a moat guarded by the shadows of retreating tadpoles. The incessant babble of background conversation amplified his paranoia about cruel gossipers plotting to shipwreck his leaking dignity. That gathering eased Ray's depression like treating sunburn with a Bunsen burner improves one's complexion. He slipped into a copse of trees, wishing it was cold enough to freeze him to a welcome death, and didn't hear her feathery footsteps above the distant din. He was powerless to welcome her, yet she knew to come in. She sat beside him, drew him near, and coaxed a torrent of silent tears from his bloodshot, insomniac eyes. He lost all sense of time and place as she pressed his ear to her serenely beating heart.